SpaceX is officially racing the clock. If Artemis 3 is to stay on schedule, Starship must pull off a lunar test flight by 2026. But here's the catch. That's barely two years before the real mission is set to begin. Is that short window anywhere near enough for all the testing still ahead? SpaceX believes it is, and they've rolled out a sweeping plan. Not just to keep the moon landing on track, but to make crewed missions to Mars a reality before this decade is out. So, what exactly is this bold plan? Let's break it down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. If SpaceX wants its Starship human landing system to actually touch down on the moon, at the very least it needs a test flight that can reach lunar orbit under ideal conditions. After all, no company has ever built a lunar lander shaped like a gigantic bullet before. And on top of that, Starship will need to pull off something far more complex, orbital refueling. That's also a step no space agency or company has ever achieved. That's why a lunar orbit mission is not just important, it's essential. And NASA is setting a similar precedent with Artemis II. Using the SLS rocket and the Orion spacecraft, four astronauts will fly around the moon without landing, a mission planned for April 2026 that will last about 10 days. So, if Starship HLS doesn't begin its own preparations soon, the recent criticism might prove right. NASA officials, and even former administrator Jim Bridenstein, have already pointed fingers, saying that if Artemis 3 slips behind schedule, it will be largely because of SpaceX's delays with HLS. However, these criticisms won't hold for long because SpaceX already has a plan of its own. In fact, the idea of sending Starship into lunar orbit isn't new at all. It goes back to the long-planned Dear Moon project, first announced in 2018, and later gaining more attention in 2021 when SpaceX officially won NASA's contract to develop the Starship human landing system. The mission was designed and funded by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa in partnership with SpaceX. The goal? To take 10 ordinary people, not professional astronauts, on a journey around the moon. Interestingly, among them is Tim Dodd, better known as the everyday astronaut. The mission relies entirely on Starship, SpaceX's massive, fully reusable spacecraft that one day could carry more than 100 people on future voyages. The flight plan is based on a free return trajectory, just like Apollo 8 and Apollo 13, meaning the spacecraft would loop around the moon and return to Earth without the need for additional propulsion, instead using the pull of lunar gravity to sling it back home. The flight was expected to last about five to six days, launching from Starbase in Texas. To make it possible, Starship would have needed orbital refueling in Earth orbit, a critical technology SpaceX is still developing, involving multiple launches of tanker Starships to transfer liquid methane and oxygen. Inside, the spacecraft was designed to be surprisingly spacious, with a volume of 1,000 cubic meters, including common areas, a kitchen, and even a shelter against solar radiation. The official cost of the mission was never disclosed, but it was estimated to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars, fully covered by Meizawa himself, with no tickets charged to the crew members. But as of now, Dear Moon has been canceled. Originally targeted for 2023, the schedule slipped again and again with Starship's development delays. On top of that, Meizawa's personal fortune has fallen to around $1.5 billion less than half of what it was when he first signed with SpaceX in 2018. Posting on X, he explained, I can't plan my future in this situation, and I feel terrible making the crew members wait longer, hence the difficult decision to cancel at this point in time. I apologize to those who were excited for this project to happen. It's a sad reality because we could have already witnessed the moment Starship soared toward the moon, but instead, it never happened. Still, there's an important caveat. If SpaceX can carry out a successful lunar orbit test with Starship HLS in 2026, the Dear Moon project could one day come back to life. And that comeback is actually very likely, because in reality, SpaceX isn't moving slowly at all. Honestly, what more could they be doing to accelerate Starship's development? They've already made staggering progress on one of the most difficult engineering challenges ever attempted, and it's clear they're going all in. Just look at what's happening on the ground. They've expanded the massive star factory at Boca Chica to dramatically speed up vehicle production. They've upgraded two giant mega bays with rotating work platforms and automated welding robots to streamline construction. On top of that, 
they're building a brand new Gigabay to push production even further. And not just one, but another Gigabay and another star factory in Florida, effectively doubling their build capacity. At the same time, SpaceX is working on four launch pads in parallel, Pad B at Boca Chica, one at LC-39A in Florida, and two more at SLC-37, also in Florida. At LC-39A, they've just completed installing both trench bucket sections for the Starship pad, crucial structures that channel and disperse the searing exhaust, flames, and immense pressure from the rocket's engines during launch. They're even constructing a giant horizontal transport barge, cheekily named You'll Thank Me Later, to move vehicles between Texas and Florida so those pads can start launching before the new factories are fully online. So, no, this isn't a company slacking off or getting distracted after winning billions in NASA contracts. If anything, SpaceX looks more dedicated than ever to building Starship and scaling up both production and launch infrastructure. And yes, all of those projects will take time to finish, maybe one to two years. But that doesn't mean SpaceX will automatically fall behind Artemis 3 in 2027. Each expansion is being managed by dedicated teams, running in parallel. So, the real question is, how can SpaceX push the pace even further to secure NASA's confidence and ours? Well, the fastest way to accelerate lunar readiness is to increase the launch cadence. Right now, we typically see one Starship flight every two to three months. That needs to climb to at least one per month on a regular basis, then two, then three. And it's not impossible. SpaceX has already set a record of 16 Falcon 9 launches in a single month earlier this year, supporting Starlink and NASA slash DOD missions. If Starship is meant to eventually replace Falcon 9, then hitting that kind of cadence is absolutely within reach. But to sustain such a crazy flight rate, one critical piece has to scale up, engine production and testing at McGregor. More launches mean more Raptors. That likely means expanding the test facilities and increasing throughput, possibly something SpaceX is already working on behind the scenes. With more test stands and higher output, they could run multiple campaigns in parallel, cutting down development time for Raptor 3. Of course, all of this depends on having enough skilled engineers and technicians. Raptor production is already a potential bottleneck, but if the plan is to move faster, they'll need far more engines, not only to power new prototypes, but also to maintain a steady stream of test flights. Solve the engine bottleneck, and the launch cadence will naturally rise. Next up, upgrading the Massey test site. SpaceX started that work after the Ship 36 incident. Massey moved from supporting Block 2 tests to Block 3, but it still isn't enough. The plan is to upgrade it further. One obvious improvement, add a second static fire position. That way, if one mount is damaged or undergoing upgrades, there's a backup ready to go. And once launch cadence ramps up, they'll need to be able to static fire two starships at the same time. Being able to do static fires at Massey is huge because it reduces disruption at the launch pads. Now, imagine if the booster stages could get static fired somewhere else too. What you need is a flame trench and test stand roughly the size of a pad, but without all the harsh requirements of a full launch mount, it doesn't have to survive a full duration launch plume. It doesn't need a quick disconnect arm, retractable hold downs, and so on. Those features might not fit Massey's setup, but SpaceX could build a separate static fire field right next to Massey along the same highway. That gives them flexibility and keeps the main pads clear for launches. And here's another bottleneck, rocket transport. At Starbase, moving these massive rockets, Starship and Super Heavy, from the build site to the launch site relies entirely on Texas State Highway 4, or Boca Chica Boulevard. It's the only road that connects the production area with the pads, and also the public's way into Boca Chica Beach. Every time SpaceX has to roll a vehicle down that highway, the road is shut for four to eight hours, sometimes longer. That disrupts local traffic and sparks constant pushback from the community and environmental activists. Sure, the newly incorporated city of Starbase authorizes these closures, but they can't happen on weekends or holidays. And that seriously slows down the goal of monthly launches. The fix? A new private road. Imagine a 3-4 to four kilometer stretch cutting north from the production site and linking directly to the old Starhopper grounds near the pads. All of it on SpaceX-owned land. No environmental choke points. Instead of four long hours, transport time could be cut in half. 
Highway 4 stays open for locals, SpaceX gets smoother, safer operations, and the whole debate over beach access finally quiets down. Most importantly, it clears the path for Starbase to hit the kind of launch cadence needed to become not just busy, but the world's premier spaceport. But none of this matters without the people behind it all. Taking better care of the people who make it all happen. Studies in workplace psychology are clear. When employees feel valued and supported, their productivity skyrockets. The vision here is to turn Starbase City into a truly livable place. Yes, SpaceX has already built apartments and even a gym for workers. But what if they added more? A grab-and-go food court, a pizza shop cranking out lunch for hundreds every day, maybe even a shuttle bus looping the complex every 15 minutes. Right now, many employees live at Starbase while others commute daily from Brownsville. With more housing and on-site services, the work gets easier, the lifestyle friendlier, and SpaceX only grows stronger as a result. After locking down the Big Four, the workforce, engines, production lines, and launch sites, flying Starship HLS to the moon is well within SpaceX's reach. At the recent World Space Business Week, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell laid out the company's vision for Starship's future. And once again, it confirmed SpaceX is on track for Artemis 3. She revealed that the focus has now shifted to version 3, a far more capable upgrade, with its first flight expected late this year or early next. One of the earliest and most important demonstrations for this version will be orbital refueling, transferring propellant between two starships in low Earth orbit, a test targeted for next year. Shotwell was clear, this capability, along with mastering the heat shield, is the toughest challenge ahead. Just as Falcon 9's reusability rewrote the cost of getting to space, on-orbit refueling could be just as revolutionary. Only this time, it opens the door to the entire solar system. The benefits are obvious. Right now, every spacecraft is capped by the fuel it carries at launch. Once that tank runs dry, the mission is over. And the rest usually becomes space junk. Refueling changes that. It means a satellite or spacecraft could keep operating, extend its mission, or even change destinations entirely. It also frees up mass for more cargo, more instruments, or higher value hardware. That alone could dramatically expand what missions can achieve and the value they deliver.